Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Uh, tell us about your book. How many months are, uh, yeah. is uh, it um, selling? Yeah, so the book came out in February. Oh. Early February. So it's been selling almost half a year. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it took me. I worked on it for a few years, but mainly I wrote it uh, in. 2000, late 2009, early 2010. Mm -hmm. um, What's the main idea? Yeah. So the main idea is that if you want the internet mm -hmm. to be to support democracy, if you want the internet to support your freedom and your rights, you need to work at it. Mm -hmm. Just like if you want your country to support human rights and to support your freedom, you have to be active. You know, if you if you do nothing, then the government does what it wants, right? So you have to participate, you have to be active. And same with the internet, that there, the internet, what you can do with it, what you cannot do with it, it depends on decisions being made by companies, you know, the engineers, the software programmers, government regulators, other internet users, you know, is shaped by everybody who uses the internet, who by everybody who uses power on the internet. So if you want the internet to support your rights, mm -hmm. to support your freedoms, to be the kind of internet that is compatible with the kind of life and the, the kind of world you want, we have to work to, to shape the internet the way we want. Mm -hmm. uh, because governments and companies, of course, want to maximize their own interests. Mm -hmm. So we need to push for our own interests. So I call for a global movement, um, a global internet freedom movement or an internet rights movement, whatever you want to call it, sort of like the environmental movement. And it's already happening, actually. Even since I wrote my book, the, the movement has been happening. But, you know, with the environment or with labor rights or with other human rights, you know, companies, to the extent that they changed their practice on environment in the past 50 years, or the extent that they changed the way they treat their workers, and it's not just because they decided to be good, it's because people put pressure. There's been a movement to, to get them to change. And same thing with governments. You know, government policies on environment, on labor, on other rights, civil liberties, when they do it right, it's because of sustained public pressure and a movement. Um, so if we want the internet to serve our interests and to protect our rights, we have to we have to have a movement putting pressure on the companies that shape the internet and pushing pressure on the governor governments that shape the internet and any other institutions that are shaping the internet. We need to put pressure on them to make sure and get involved with the process to make sure that the internet develops in a way that is compatible with the kind of world we want to have. Mm -hmm. And do you think that uh, your book would have been different without the Global Voices experience? No, nothing would be the same. <laughs> uh, the, the Global Vo Voices experience has really shaped my understanding of many things. Um, and uh, just uh, working with people from around the world and understanding their concerns uh, and hearing their voices and, and knowing their stories has had a huge effect on my understanding. Um, and um, also, I think it's had a real influence on me in terms of understanding how people around the world who use the internet kind of view the world and view the internet, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it, it, it helped me have a more direct understanding of many of the communities on the internet outside of the West, because I think a lot of American writers, they understand sort of the internet in North America and Europe, but they don't understand much about internet users in other places. Um, and Global Voices really helped me understand the voices and concerns um, and, and, and just you know, personalities and, and just the vibrant nature of communities on the internet around the world. And also the challenges that everybody faces. And it helped me understand what are the common challenges, you know, across lots of different countries mm -hmm. and what are some of the unique cultural differences also that we need to respect.
I think that your book would uh, be really interesting for people down there in Latin America. Mm, yeah, well, there's a Spanish edition now. It, 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 it Official or the pirate one? Official one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it just came out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, published by a Spanish publisher. Yeah. It's called Deusto, D-E-U-S-T-O. Mm -hmm. It's a, a Spanish publisher. They often publish technology books. But uh, yeah, so um, I have a, I can send you the link. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, on my website, which is consentofthenetwork.com, there is a link on the menu. It says global, and if you click on that, there's there's uh, some information about the Spanish edition. Oh, great! Yeah, thank you. Thanks You're for welcome. your time, Rebecca. Thank you very much.